Hello. Uh, today we're remembering St Theodore of Canterbury, who um, is an Archbishop of Canterbury, um, really in sort of the very first group of Archbishops. Um, he's perhaps more famous for the fact that he, he has written books of penitentials. Um, so obviously one of these uh, ideas that you... You, the way that you should do penance after um, saying confession. And how things have evolved since then. It's, it's interesting to know that there, is, that there is a lot of growth in Christianity. There should be growth. Um, of course, we've got to be careful about how we do it, because um, growth can be organic, or it can be artificial, and really do have to look and see what uh, what true growth should look like. Um, the Vincentian canon is, should be the the guide here, and um, the idea that it has to be something that that is that is believed by everyone at all times, everywhere. There has to be an element of universality about it. Um, so things like um, canon law can evolve quite easily because it is essentially um, uh, how uh, God's law is uh, expressed in uh, in the world at the time. A law has to be practical, and it has to be in canon law. It has to be in keeping with church doctrine. As Anglican Catholics, we. In many ways, quite lucky because we've got three strands to our heritage. Um, we've got the Anglican heritage, we've got the Catholic heritage, and we've got the Orthodox heritage. And they bind together. One of the big um, areas in which uh, growth happens is, is, in, is in the nature of the sacraments. Now, you probably know that for a sacrament to be to be done, it's it's got to be an outward sign of an invisible grace. That's Saint Augustine talking. But it's also part of a covenant whereby we do something and God does something, and the end result is God's grace in our lives. So that's the key thing about it. So. What we have to do is you have to do the right thing, and that means you have to do the 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 right sacrament it has to be done with the right person, with the right materials, in the right way for the right reason. So, um, so for example, baptism has to be done on a on a person. Can't be a baptized stone. Has to be used with water. The water has to be poured on the head, or the, 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 the person has to be immersed in water, and the prayer has to be, uh, I baptise thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the reason is that, the reason for doing so is for that person to become a member of the Church and receive the grace whereby um, uh, whereby he is incorporated into the, the family of the church, becomes uh, open to the um, the other graces of God. So, in posh language, we say that it's, it, you have to have the, the right recipient. That's the person who's, who's having the, having the sacrament. Uh, the right matter, so that's the water in this case, the right form, which is the prayer, and the right intention, so why are we doing it? Now, what is clear from history, look at the history of the sacraments, um, we certainly see very stable sacraments for baptism and for the Eucharist. Um, they don't, they don't really change a great deal, and it's just why uh, the, the Reformation Anglicans uh, 
said that only real two um, sacraments of the gospel. Of course, the Anglican Catholics, we hold the older tradition that there are at least seven. Um, but we certainly do regard seven. The other sacraments, they're a little bit, a little bit less uh, well prescribed, but nonetheless, they've come out of the church. The church has always done them. One uh, particular example is confirmation. Um, confirmation occurred uh, largely because uh, a priest can baptize, baptized, but cannot anoint. Um, that's the way the church has always done it. So in the early uh, early days, when baptism, uh, 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 confirmation was linked to baptism and the Eucharist, you had all three together. Um, when p priests were more available and bishops had more to do, of course, the baptism got separated from the confirmation. And so the question of the f the, the the reason for doing confirmation was still quite clear. You're confirming someone in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why why you want to do it. The reception, the, the matter has always stayed the same, which is the laying on the, the hands on the recipient, on the baptised person. What hasn't always been quite cl uh, very clear has been what the form has, what the prayer should be. And that's why there are different, different rites. Um, another one, which is quite pertinent to Anglican Catholics, is that of ordination. Again, the matter, the, the matter is again the laying on the hands. The recipient is, has always been a male. The matter is the laying on the hands by the bishop, um, and the intention has always been to make priests do what the church has always done and that's why we say receive the holy ghost the holy ghost knows what uh, what's going to happen the holy, no holy ghost knows what a priest is what a bishop is um, what has changed and developed over the years has been the form so for example in the old roman right the the, the prayer of ordination was not necessarily at the same time as the laying on of hands. And really what you have to do is you have to start seeing the whole ordination service as a whole thing. You know that before the, 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 the ordination, uh, the person is a, a layman or a deacon, and afterwards he is um, a, a priest or a bishop. But the form has changed. Uh, even in the Roman Catholic Church, the form has changed. With the, with the Paul VI Missal, the Va Second Vatican Missal, the form has changed. And some uh, very traditionalist uh, Roman Catholics have said, well, because you've changed the form, you've now fallen foul of the very same apostolic a cure with which you denounced Anglican orders. Well, of course, we've always said that Anglican orders are valid. And, but what does that mean? It means the, 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 that you really do get the same sacraments as you would in the Roman Catholic Church, though others would, would disagree with that. Other Anglicans would disagree with that. So we have the idea of form, which has evolved. Even if the, the intention and the matter, and the recipients haven't. We have to be very careful, though, that how evolution uh, occurs here. Because clearly we can't just sort of start chopping and changing and saying, oh, well, actually, we can do this, we can do that, we can, do this, we can make these changes. Anglicanism is very pragmatic, in that it will adapt to the changes of the circumstances very nicely. But sometimes, in the recent years, as has happened, it has gone too far. There are others who are very... Um, say that there cannot be any change whatsoever. 
none whatsoever. But that doesn't recognise the fact that there are um, uh, changes of circumstance. I mean, for example, if you're not near um, uh, a lake or um, a stream, then the best you can do is to pour water over, over, over a baby's head rather than dip them. It's not, it's not practical. Likewise, you can be too rigid about the sort of the form and uh, and then lose out on uh, lose out on things and possibly even commit uh, sacrilege by, um, for example, uh, trying to ordain a priest who is already ordained. So it really does mean that we have to sit down and think very very hard about um, the tradition, how evolution is happening and whether it is indeed valid. And it has to be for the whole church, it has to be got organic growth. You can't just break a bit off and start again. It has to, it has to be something that would be recognised throughout the entirety of the church. Um, that's the whole business of organic growth, not artificial growth. Um, but we need to be open to growth because, of course, the Holy Spirit guides us and the Holy Spirit doesn't contradict himself. He doesn't um, undo what, he, what he's done. He, can't, he doesn't change the past. Um, so being open to the Holy Spirit does mean um, ready to accept growth. But it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't mean that we abandon the Christians who have gone before us, who wouldn't recognise that. So, God bless you. God bless you if you are preparing for yourself for one of the, the, the sacraments, um, particularly if it's baptism or confirmation where you have that, uh, you're being entered into the Christian faith. God bless you that you may receive the full grace of God in whichever sacrament you, you are partaking. God bless you that you may see where the Holy Spirit's leading you, where the Holy Spirit's leading the church and guiding guiding you forward to his great glory. And God bless you that you may see the wonderful um, end of all that evolution, the end of being perfection in Christ. God bless you. Please pray for me.